Thank you for the introduction and for inviting me. I'm a simple liver person and a small pediatrician. And in fact, I followed Anna Tronkowska in all what I did for wisdom disease. So I was able to collect more than 170 patients, children with wisdom disease. It is the biggest group in the world at this age. And we have really a huge experience. So I would like to share our experience and also what we did in collaboration with Anna Tronkowska in regard of liver presentations. I have nothing to disclose to this lecture. And I, in my lecture, I would like to refer to a few guidelines of our position papers. First, coming from US. The second, coming from ESL, from the European group. And the last one, which was published just recently by our ESPEGAN, European Society of Pediatric Gastroenterology, Hepatology, and Nutrition Group, under my leadership. And I think we were able to collect really a lot of data on liver presentations, which is the predominant pre presentation in childhood. Starting from presentations of liver diseases. As you know, perhaps even you neuro neurologists, that in liver we have mainly, we deal mainly with rare disorders. There are only few common disorders, which is non-alcoholic fatty liver disease and HCV, viral infection. HBV is not common any longer, at least in pediatric age. So we have to deal with many, many rare disorders with variable presentations, but Many of them have very similar symptoms, like hepatomegaly, increased ALT, ST, and sometimes they also have severe symptoms. So what can be the liver presentations? This can be any. From asymptomatic presentations with increased transaminase only discovered serendipitously in Poland, which is very common because many doctors test for transaminases or screening for family members. And hepatic presentations can be very uh, variable from hepatomegaly, insidious onset of vague symptoms, acute hepatitis, to fulminant hepatic uh, presentation and decompensated cirrhosis. Acute liver failure is re really a challenge for us liver persons because we have to make the diagnosis very quickly to make the right decision on therapy. And some symptoms may help, some presentations like Kaiser Fleischer ring may help to make the diagnosis of family history of Wilson disease or some neurological features if they are present. Jaundice, of course, and hemolysis are quite common in Wilson presentation. Usually, these patients present with highly increased bilirubin and relatively low transaminases compared to the severe presentation. So it may help, but it will not uh, allow us to make the final diagnosis. Of course, we do the lab tests, which we, you as neurologists do uh, in your practice. So we measure ceruloplasmin, urinary copper excretion. Uh, we do challenge tests. We can uh, of, of also measure liver copper. Uh, serum copper is not very help, helpful, uh, so usually we skip this one. So these are the tests we, you are aware of. And I would like to comment on lab tests in regard of liver presentations. First of all, coming, starting from urinary copper excretion after pregnancy lamin challenge, I think it's not a very valuable test, and recently we almost stopped to do it. King's College experience came first, and they found it valuable, but in severe, severe presentation of liver disease, mainly in this acute presentation. Other uh, evaluations coming from uh, Da Costa found it still very positive, but in a small group of patients. But another presentation from, uh, uh, evaluation from Germany was more critical, finding the sensitivity and specificity of this test not as high as uh, reported previously, and it was even lower in asymptomatic patients. So it's not very valuable. In neonates, in infants, we have even more problems to make the diagnosis without molecular testing, because these infants and neonates present with physiologically low ceruloplasmin levels, and copper in the liver may be high. So in infancy, usually we do not perform biochemical testing. What is the value of liver biopsy? We do liver biopsy because of liver symptoms, usually, and liver histology does not help much, because even if we commonly see steatosis, steatosis is very common in adult uh, pathology for different reasons, Portal fibrosis and inflammation with progressive progression may be present, and it's commonly found in 
all other liver diseases. So we can also confuse it, this presentation, this histological presentation, with autoimmune hepatitis. Rhodanine staining is not a valuable test, so we, perf we prefer to measure liver copper, and we do it in Poland. Uh, so it's, it's a simple test, and I advise everybody who performs liver bi biopsy to preserve a small piece, one centimeter, just in case you, you need the further diagnostic test for liver copper. What is the value of liver, of liver copper? Ferenczi papers, uh, paper came first, and perhaps you are aware of this paper. I would like to refer to more recent paper from, from Young who evaluated really a very big group of patients with, liver with various liver diseases, among them quite many with Wilson, almost 180. And all patients with Wilson disease with liver dysfunction had liver copper over 250 micrograms. So really, it was a very good uh, screening test. But, uh, but finally, when they evaluated also those who had other presentations, like primary biliary cirrhosis, and primary sclerosis and cholangitis, cholestatic diseases, they found uh, these high values of liver copper in a high proportion of the other patients. So it's not a so valuable test as we expected before. Finally, with quite uh, high sensitivity, but still it may be confused with some other diseases. We, in our pediatric cohort, we also analyzed a group of patients a few years ago more than 70 patients uh, with Wilson disease, more than 200 with other liver diseases, and we found a relatively high and uh, high sensitivity and specificity of this test. But we uh, we advise to change a little bit optimum cutoff values to a little higher level of 300. I think relative exchange, exchangeable copper will be discussed later. I will only mention that it's only the French experience in. Poland, we do not do this test. It was tested in relatively small cohorts of patients, uh, and I would like to refer to this small group of 16 patients studied where it was found to be very sensitive and very specific, but still needs to be tested in other bigger cohorts and in other populations. The diagnostic score we use in pediatric age and in liver patients uh, is the Ferenczi score. So uh, you are aware of this score that it combines clinical features and combines laboratory testing. And of course, we give points to different results, four, four points and more, and make the diagnosis uh, final. Uh, we, in pediatric cohorts, we, other groups, uh, tested Ferenczi score, like uh, the King's College group tested more than uh, this score in more than 50 children and found it to be very uh, uh, sensitive. They uh, calculated positive and negative predictive values, which were very, very high. Another group, uh, uh, Italian group, tested this score in 40 children and found it also very valuable. They also discussed uh, single tests, biochemical tests like ceruloplasmin and basal urinary copper, which were not highly sensitive and specific. So in fact, this score seems to be very valuable in pediatric age. And for a moment, I would like to discuss with you diagnostic challenges, because uh, in fact, we must differentiate Wilson disease with rare disorders. That's a, the major challenge for us pediatricians and for liver experts. And uh, perhaps you know that uh, Mieli Vargani from King's College tends to, to say that you cannot diagnose autoimmune hepatitis without excluding Wilson disease. I like this approach, and in fact, some reports, some patients, single cases were reported up, up to now, who were confused, who had autoimmune hepatitis, finally occurred to have Wilson disease. The question is whether we can have a concomitant Wilson and autoimmune hepatitis disease altogether. That's the open question. Uh, we want to publish, hopefully we will publish it very soon, our experience of four patients who were confused with, who tended to have autoimmune hepatitis, finally it occurred uh, that they have Wilson disease. Three uh, responded very well to Wilson disease therapy and did not require steroids and azathioprine any longer. So there was, it was only Wilson disease. One child seems to have a combination of these two diseases. And uh, a few years ago, we started also to be interested in patients who did not fit uh, exactly the Wilson disease. 
uh, and we published with Pietro Bayro a paper discussing non-Wilsonian, Wilson-like patients in pediatric age. Uh, it started from really from uh, Italian experience, from Pietro uh, Bayro experience, where he found four patients with histological steatofibrosis, mild cardiomyopathy, uh, resolving hypoglycemia, hypercholesterolemia, persistently low seroplasmin, uh, and borderline urinary and liver cop. So. Uh, what was interesting, they found abnormal transferrin isoelectric focusing profile, which points to CDGS, congenital, congenital defects of glycosylation, which takes place also in Golgi apparatus. So that was very interesting, and we also uh, tried to identify similar patients in our cohort. We had a boy uh, with elevated transaminase from the age of three years, with low seroplasmin, as you can see, uh, low serum copper, increased highly, urinary copper excretion, uh, also after penicillamine change, challenge, liver copper was not highly increased. And we found a combined NO glycosylation defect, so we questioned the diagnosis of Wilson disease, but up to now we don't know this diagnosis. This case was very important because in collaboration with Niemeg and with Dirk Lefebvre, we started to investigate these difficult, strange patients. And we had later a girl, nine years old, with circulatory failure, diagnosis of dilated cardiomyopathy, with chronic hepatitis, increased uh, mildly ALT uh, and AST. And uh, of course, she was tested for Wilson disease. Seroplasmin was borderline. Uh, uh, serum copper was low, but urinary copper was not highly increased. And in this guide, we also found a generalized hypoglycase glycosylation of serum uh, glycoproteins. And finally, in collaboration with Niemegen and with many other colleagues with, from US, from all around the world, we are able to identify 19 patients from three years to 40 years old with uvula bifida cleft palate, hepatopathy in all but one, hypoglycemia, muscle weakness, rhabdomyolysis, dilated cardiomyopathy, and all these patients presented with abnormal glycosylation of plasma transferring. This is the testing. This is this abnormal hypoglycosylation uh, uh, of protein transferring. So very simple tests, easily applied in many laboratories. And finally, we, which we published in New England Journal of Medicine a few years ago, finally we uh, identified the defect, which was phosphoglucomutase 1 deficiency. So this shows you a story that sometimes if you have such strange patients, you have to dig further, and it may be another disease, not with Another question uh, which appears in pediatric age is whether you can test Wilson disease in early age and what is the value of the test, what is the effect of therapy, when to start the therapy. And in fact, there are only case reports, one case uh, or another one reported from different centers. We were able to collect 21 patients with liver presentation below five years of age. So it was, it was really a huge cohort for this age group. Uh, seven had abnormal liver tests below two years, uh, six have had family history, eight the diagnosis, had the final diagnosis below eight years, 16 had seroplasm below 20, four from, had urinary copper uh, above 100, so not very many, as you see this test was not very sensitive, and uh, they responded very well to zinc or penicillamine therapy. So this is our experience published last year. The question is whether we can screen for Wilson disease. Screening would, could be applied in childhood, better in childhood than in adulthood. Uh, and the, these are the comments from literature search that seroplasmin is not a very good tool for screening, at, at least in newborns, because in newborns, the levels of uh, seroplasmin are physiologically decreased. And in the uh, case uh, studies of uh, with certain patients from the good track cards, it was found that they presented with extremely low seroplasmin level, 2.8, 2.6. So perhaps if you change the normal values, perhaps it's the best to be used, but not at the moment. And mutation analysis could be effective only in populations with singles, uh, with a few mutations, most common mutations, which is not, not the case for, sm for most populations. I will discuss very brief briefly pharmacotherapy in the liver. We use the same methods of treatment as in neurological cases. So we use, you use DPEN, TNT, zinc acetate, zinc sulfate, in Poland mainly zinc sulfate, B6, 
because it's cheaper. Uh, so uh, that's, uh, that's the rules of um, uh, dosage. Uh, I, uh, my, uh, my view is that zinc is still very effective in liver presentation. But most of the liver persons will tell you that they do not use zinc. Uh, first of all, I would like to refer to the paper, uh, to, the, uh, uh, to the systematic review published a few years ago, which concluded with this simple sentence that, uh, uh, that patients with liver presentation seem to respond better to, uh, to penicillamine than to zinc. Of course, experience, experience is much bigger for penicillamine than for trientine or uh, than for zinc sulfate or zinc acetate. But still, I think it comes from more from experience, not from good, really compar uh, comparative studies. Uh, zinc is also not easy to be applied in children because many of them have uh, abdominal pain. That for this reason, they stop treatment. And in a few patients who presented with really severe abdominal pain, these were nine patients, and New Zealand gastritis, we did gastroscopy and we could see uh, in these patients uh, uh, not only uh, we could see ulcerations in the duodenum and in the uh, in the gaster. So it seems that zinc sulfate is not so uh, easygoing drug. It can really cause problems, severe problems, and we have sometimes to stop this therapy to change it to penicillamine or to zinc acetate. Uh, what about Wilson disease with encephalopathy? It is a major challenge. In fact, we agree, all of us, hepatologists, that uh, this disease has poor prognosis. We should list these children for liver transplantation. We should transplant. But we should also start treatment immediately with trientine, with zinc, DPN, with zinc, or, or uh, only trientine or penicillin. Whether other treatments can help, like MARS, so uh, albumin dialysis, we do it in our center. We have it. We have access to MARS. We, have, we are a liver transplant center. But many centers do not have this access. Annie Doan is critical to Mars from King's College. Hemodia filtration was used and plasmapheresis was used in the experience of some centers, but uh, I would be very critical to these methods. So finally, how to make the decision on liver transplantation. And you know that King's College developed a very good prognostic uh, index, uh, which uh, uh, refers to bilirubin and INR AST uh, uh, white cell count and albumin uh, levels, and uh, the uh, sensitivity is really very, and specificity is very, really very high. Uh, the uh, cutoff value is 11. So finally, I would like to show you the major recommendations from our position paper. Uh, we recommend to look for Wilson disease in differential diagnosis above one year of age already, not two one year of age, in, chi in children with any sign of liver disease, from asymptomatically increased serum transaminases to cirrhosis with hepatosplenomegaly and bursitis, or acute liver failure. Uh, and uh, you, you see it grading and agreement among us by Delphi system, of voting. Uh, diagnostic tests for recent disease in suspected patients should include liver function tests, so we should, all, should always perform serum transaminases, bilirubin in direct indirect alkaline phosphatase and INR, serum seroplasmine at the first stage, and 24 urinary copper excision already at the first stage, the first approach, diagnostic approach. We should use Ferenczi scoring system and mutation analysis, of course, of ATP7B gene may facilitate the diagnosis. Copper uh, estimation in liver tissue can help, but usually we are able to make the diagnosis at this stage. Uh, given its safety profile, uh, zinc salts are, and preferably, preferably zinc acetate could be used in pre-symptomatic patients and in those patients who normalize their transaminases under, uh, uh, under uh, DPEN or TNTN therapy. That's our agreement, uh, but I think uh, zinc is even more effective than we, we think. Children with uh, signs of significant uh, uh, liver disease such as cirrhosis or abnormal INR should be preferably treated, treated with copper halating agents and children with acute liver failure or decompensated 
liver cirrhosis should be transferred and managed in pediatric liver transplant centers. About these pediatric liver transplant centers must really have good knowledge. And uh, because sometimes, it's my feeling and not only mine, Anna will agree with me, that they are uh, too fast to transplant. Children with decompensated liver cirrhosis should be treated with a chelating agent or combination of zinc salts, chelating agent, uh, that may preclude the need for liver transplantation. And uh, we should use the King's Wilson Index for this. The major challenges for future, of course, gene modifiers are in the scope of our interest. Uh, we are not able to disclose what we already did, but we, we have also already some experience with this. Uh, increased awareness and the widely applied diagnostic test in pediatric ages is a challenge. Quick diagnosis in acute liver failure is also a, a challenge, and we should improve effectivity of therapy, which means mainly improve compliance. I would like to thank mainly the collaborators from the Euro Wilson group, because so Anna already mentioned that, that group. I learned personally a lot working in this group. I was also in the steering committee. Uh, Stuart Tanner from Sheffield led, led the group. Uh, Annie Doan, Pietro Vairo was uh, so Anna is also my teacher here in Poland, Roderick Van Hoven, Hartmut Schmidt, and many others. Maciej Adamowicz did this glycosylation studies. Uh, he unfortunately passed away in Dirk Weber from Niemek. Thank you.